Information Engagement uh, Department here at the libraries. And um, for our weekly read aloud, we're going to have Sean Ferguson, from, appropriately from our music dance library, to read lyrics and talk about um, a variety of lyrics from songs from the stage and screen both. And I'll let Sean speak over. Thanks, Ruth. Uh, for those of you who don't know, I work here at OSU in the Music and Dance Library, and uh, Ruth worked also in the Music and Dance Library at one time, and I have a colleague here, Gretchen Atkinson, who works with me in the Music and Dance Library, and those two have a large uh, role of inspiration in this presentation today. Uh, Ruth had the idea of, of having some lyrics from song on the, the read aloud series. Uh, and particularly maybe something where the songs have some pretty creative and inventive uh, humor in them that you might miss if you were just listening to the song in a performance on the stage or uh, on a recording. And so they kind of stand alone as very, um, very creative and sophisticated poetry, I think some ways. Uh, and shortly after Ruth suggested the topic, uh, my colleague Gretchen happened to mention this CD, uh, which if any of you are interested in humorous songs of the, the stage and cabaret type uh, genre, this is a, an excellent CD that sort of was a jumping off point for me today. And I'm reading a few lyrics from this as well as other things from Broadway and and uh, cabaret, uh, but this is uh, this is called blah blah blah, and you'll know why a little bit later. So I kind of grouped the lyrics that I picked out for today into some very loose uh, little sets of themes, you might say. Just sort of happened that way as I was looking through the vast amount of material you could pick for something like this, and I thought I'd start with a little group of songs that are more or less on the theme of culinary arts or entertaining or eating, that sort of thing. And the first one is by Cole Porter, and it's called The Tale of the Oyster. It's from 50 Million Frenchmen, the show from 1929. Uh, it was a musical comedy, uh, basically boy meets girl type story. Not the most sophisticated plot in the world, but uh, it compares 1920s Paris with the current censorship and prohibition uh, going on in the U.S. at the time. And this song is sung by a character named Violet Hildegard, a fur buyer who sends risque French postcards to her children. Down by the sea lived a lonesome oyster every day getting sadder and moister. He found his home life awfully wet and longed to travel with the upper set. Poor little oyster. Fate was kind to that oyster, we know, when one day the chef from the park casino saw that oyster lying there and said, I'll put you on my bill of fare. Lucky little oyster. See him on his silver platter, watching the queens of fashion chatter, hearing the wives of millionaires discuss their marriages and their love affairs. Thrilled little oyster. See that bivalve social climber feeding the rich Mrs. Hogenheimer. Think of his joy as he gaily glides down to the middle of her gilded insides. Proud little oyster. After lunch, Mrs. H complains and says to her hostess, I've got such pains. I came to town on my yacht today, but I think I'd better hurry back to Oyster Bay. Scared little oyster. Off they go through the troubled tide, the yacht rolling madly from side to side. They're tossed about till that fine young oyster finds that it's time he should quit his cloister. Up comes the oyster. Back once more where he started from, 
he murmured, I haven't a single qualm, for I have had a taste of society, and society has had a taste of me. Wise little oyster. This next one is from a show with music by Leonard Bernstein and lyrics by Betty Comden and Adolph Green. And it's from the show called On the Town, which was from 1944. And it's about uh, American sailors on shore leave during World War II in New York City. And this song is sung by a character named Hildy Esterhazy who is described as an amorous and aggressive taxi driver who meets up with one of the sailors. Oh, I can cook, too, on top of the rest. My seafood's the best in the town, and I can cook, too. My fish can't be beat. My sugar's the sweetest around. I'm a man's ideal of a perfect meal, right down to the demi -tops. I'm a pot of joy for a hungry boy. Baby, I'm cooking with gas. Oh, I'm a gumdrop, a sweet lollipop, a brook trout right out of the brook. And what's more, baby, I can cook. Some girls make magazine covers. Some girls keep house on a dime. Some girls make wonderful lovers. But what a lucky find I'm. I'd make a magazine cover. I do keep house on a dime. I make a wonderful lover. I should be paid overtime. Because I can bake too, on top of the lot. My oven's the hottest you'll find. Yes, I can roast too. My chickens just ooze. My gravy will lose you your mind. I'm a brand new note on a table d'hote but just try me a la carte. With a single course, you can choke a horse. Baby, you won't know where to start. Oh, I'm an hors d'oeuvre, a jelly preserve, not in the recipe book. And what's more, baby, I can cook. Some girls make wonderful gyros. Some girls can hit a high C. Some girls make good taxi drivers, but what a genius is me. I'd make a wonderful driver. I even hit a high C. I'd make the best taxi driver. I rate a big Navy E. Because I can fry too on top of the heap. My Crisco's as deep as a pool. Yes, I can broil too. My ribs get applause. My lamb chops will cause you to drool. For a candied sweet or a pickled beet, step up to my smorgasbord. Walk around until you get your fill. Baby, you won't ever be bored. Oh, I'm a pâté, a marron glacé, a dish you will wish you had took. And what's more, baby, I can cook. Next one here is a, an extended uh, musing on who should sit where. And the song actually exists in <coughs> two versions. And the other version has different words, and it's called Musical Chairs. This one is called Place Settings, and it's by a British uh, man of many talents when it comes to writing and producing and uh, performing <coughs> in stage cabaret. <coughs> His name is Jeremy Nicholas. Sheila's next to Andrew, and Andrew's opposite Marge. Rita can have the window seat because she's rather large. Clive can flirt with Kay, so put Sally on the right. But Kath must be with Ian because he's bound to end up tight. Edward can go in the corner. I'm sure he wouldn't mind. Bill can talk the pants off Jim. Let Joy be unconfined. But Dorothy's a problem. Because she's such a bitch. 
On the other hand, she's very old and very rich. Susan has decided that she's going to come with Kim, and Bertrand is insisting that we put him next to Tim. Philip and his girlfriend won't come with any luck. They've got so much in common. They're both as common as muck. Simon can cope with Nikki as long as she's not near Ted, so we'd better put Ken with Antonia after what Elspeth said. But Dorothy is a problem. She's such a frightful bore. Her cystitis is still playing up, so put her near the door. Jill has rung to tell me that she rather fancies Dick, but Rachel says he might not come. Doesn't it make you sick? Can we ask the Wilsons? Would it be all right if we took them into the garden and kept them out of sight? Eric and Wayne and Carlene will have to sit next to their mom. So long as I'm nowhere near them, we'd better let them come. But Dorothy's a problem. She's got a frightful thirst. She eats us out of house and home and always gets here first. Now Martin's next to Tina, and Tina's such a tease. Keep her away from Elizabeth or it's bound to upset Louise. Cyril and Natasha have said they'll try and show, but they don't get on with David, Richard, Angela, or Joe. Jean-Pierre and Martina are flying in from France. Shall we leave a place for them, or shall we take a chance? But Dorothy is a problem. She's coming on her own. Reg put up with her last time. Let's give her Auntie Joan. I think that's everybody. There's you and me and Ben. Oh, wait! We've left out Janet and Keith. We'll have to start again. <laughs>